Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Um, always a joy to be here. I told a couple of the guys, I said, I don't travel much. And um, it's hard to tell Bob Rogers no. <laughs> so I'm here. Amen. Um, I brought my Bible in my briefcase. I thought of my preach. But I think I'm going to just share with you the word of the Lord tonight. Um, I think that all of us have been in a place where we desperately need to see God do something. And um, first of all, I want to tell you, you're safe because you're in the hands of the Lord. And God never forsakes the church. And there is no entity in the earth that has more power than the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so there's been a real shift um, in the spirit. And I thought it was very interesting that the first day of 2023 was the Sabbath. That, that, that's no accident because the Sabbath is where we cease from our own labors. And I believe that one of the mistakes that we made as a church for the last two years is we look to the wrong source as our savior. And we got so distracted with politics that we begin to lose our focus on the fact that we are the church. And that we are separate from that by the power of the Lord. And so as God is beginning to do things, there is a, there is a, there is a spirit of rest that needs to come on the people of the Lord. And um, this really came up in my spirit because I did, I, I was shocked. And I, I feel like that it, God is going to deal with this. But um, I've been very vocal about Donald Trump. And uh, I've been grateful that he has been our president. But uh, I can tell you this, that there is, a, there is a push that has been in the spirit realm to reduce this nation to a place that we disregard the eternal laws of God. I can tell you this, God can change his mind. And we are in a season where there is a sovereignty of the hand of the Lord. And so uh, I've, I've been seeking the Lord. God, what are you saying? What are you going to do in this hour? And Friday night, God, began, when I went to bed, the Lord began to speak to me. So I'm going to give you some things that I hear the spirit of the Lord speaking in this hour. Uh, first of all, the Lord says this last harvest of God is not going to be tied to politics. You need to shift your attention from that, says the Lord, because I am God and I do not stand in the way where the men make laws that oppose me, says the Lord. And so whatever the Lord is going to do will be separate from that, says God. In fact, God says what I'm going to do is so sovereign, it is so divine and so powerful that men will stand and shake their heads and say, how could this be? The Lord says that what I'm getting ready to do will be so strengthening that we will say, surely we have never seen it on this wise. First thing I heard the Lord say was, he said, there are two harvests that are getting ready to hit the earth. And the first one is a harvest where the Lord said, I'm getting ready to clean out the house of God. There, it does not matter, says the Lord, how great the harvest is. If there is no place to put it, then it perishes. And God said, my house has been so full of uncleanliness. And so the Lord says, just as I declared in my word, I am sending angels to the earth and they're going to begin to reap. And it says, not in the house of the wicked, but the Lord says judgment is going to begin in the house of the Lord. 
God took me back to this thing. He said, there is promotion coming to the unknown in the house of God. There have been so many that have paid the price, that have been overlooked, been denied, been maligned, been mocked because we were radical for the Lord. And God said, I'm going to begin to go into the house of the Lord. And he said, when it came time for Mordecai to be promoted in the house of Ahasuerus, he said, I killed Haman to give him that position. Now, God said there are so many places in the house of the Lord right now that are occupied by the lukewarm and the unholy and the compromising. So God said, it's not politics I'm coming after first. I'm coming into the house of the Lord. And the Lord said, you're going to see friends fall on the right hand and on the left hand. God said, get ready because this year you're going to see major ministries that have had the ear of the church in this nation. And the Lord said, I'm going to remove them from the house of the Lord, not because they are unclean, but because they are old wine skins. And what I'm getting ready to do, they cannot handle the new wine that's coming. God said, you're going to see funerals of well-known pastors that have denied the presence of the Lord. God said, I never created seeker friendly. I never created the restriction of my presence. Says God, I am raising up a congregation and a house and a leader that will not tell me I cannot move. I cannot cast out demons and I cannot set them free. This is my house, says the Lord, and my house shall be called a house of prayer. Before Calvary, the Bible says that God went into to the temple of the Lord and he made a whip and he drove them out that have monopolized the church and turned it into a money making business and the Lord said do you not know that the wealth of the wicked is getting ready to be released to the house of the Lord I don't need my people manipulated and robbed says God I am going to release wealth to you that the enemy has never had there is wealth says God in the heavens that has yet never been touched by the wicked or the righteous. I have saved it for such a time as this. I am breaking the debt, says God, off of my people that you will go serve services without even taking up an offering. But it will come in by the millions, says the Lord, for the kingdom of God. This is an hour, says God. I'm going to put your hearts back in your hands. I'm going to take them up with the willow trees and there is a shout coming up in the house of the Lord <laughs> hallelujah because I have been silent men thought that I would not require them at my hands but God said I have loosed Lord says, when the new year started, I loosed the death angel in the earth. And just as I declared in Psalms 91, a thousand will fall on one hand, and 10,000 will fall on the other. So shall it now be, says God. I am going to remove the distractions in the kingdom of God. And God said that I am going to empty out places. The Lord said in some houses, I will move all the whole platform off. And I will raise up praise teams that know how to pray and seek my face and call upon the name of the Lord. God said the mixture that's been in the house of God has made the church have a smell that the world did not want. But the Lord said, I am releasing the smell of the rose of Sharon in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prepare yourself for every house that makes room for the presence of the Lord. You will never be able to contain the harvest that's coming in, saith God. This harvest will look like anything that you have ever seen seen this time saith God and I heard this strong the other night the Lord said that this is not just the latter rain of my glory in the earth but God said I'm reaching back even centuries and I'm going to recover the former rain 
And God said, I'm going to pull the former rain from the past. And I'm going to release the latter rain, hallelujah, from heaven. And God said, they're going to come at the same time. And the Lord says, it's going to sweep across the earth. The Lord says, because we live in the United States, that we have the thinking that this would be a revival or a harvest that would affect our nation. Not so, says the Lord. God said, this is not a one nation harvest, but this time, this is a global harvest. God said, I'm going to glean from every nation. And uh, the other day, the Lord spoke to him. He said, I'm getting ready to release my glory in the United States. And God said, I'm going to hit the four corners of the United States. He said, I'm going to start in New York City because that's where originally the glory of God began to move in this country. He said, it's going to go all the way down to Miami, Florida. And then he said, I'm going to cross over the lower part and I'm going to invade California, starting with Southern California. He said, I'm going to go up and hit the state of Washington, the strongholds of the new age, the strongholds of abortion. And God said, my revival is not going to start in the Bible Belt. It's going to start in the midst where it looks like it's dead. It's dry up that the enemy said this is our land and you can't have it and God said I'm going to invade the areas that the enemy put no trespassing and I'm going to lose my spirit my glory and my anointing when it hits those four corners says God there's going to be a convergence at once and all of my spirit is going to begin to sweep across from the east to the west hallelujah until this nation is ablaze with the glory of God. It doesn't matter how bad it looks. God said, even as I waited for Gideon to have his greatest victory till it was midnight, I waited until it got dark in this nation because when the light of the glory of God is released, everyone will say only the Lord could do this. I'm going to make demons bow down to the name of Jesus. I'm going to lift up my son, saith God. And I am going to redeem the hour that you live in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God put a spirit of boldness in this house. May God turn you upside down. May God make you radical in the Holy Ghost. May God make you so full of this spirit that you say it's like a fire set up within my bones. I release on this place the anointing of God, the healing of God, the unction of God until you cannot contain yourself. God said this will be like nothing you've ever seen. The Lord said, get ready. He said, I'm going to bring your little children back into the sanctuary. And God said, it's going to be a normal thing to begin to watch six and seven year olds prophesy the word of the Lord. And as it begins to happen, we will begin to recognize that they have certain gifts and certain anointings. And God says that you're going to see children lay hands on people that are paralyzed. And they're going to be healed instantly by the power of God. The Lord says the reason I'm going to do this is because the enemy targeted your children. And God said, this foul demon of hell of sexual confusion, and sexual identity confusion that has been loosed in this nation on your children. God said, I'm going to break that thing. Hallelujah. God said, this thing is short lived by the power of God.
And you say, how can the Lord do that? Because God says, I'm going to invade your educational system. Hallelujah. And where they have had tenured professors that did not believe in me, I'm going to begin to physically remove these professors. I'm going to let my spirit break loose in colleges all over this nation. Before I get done, saith the Lord, Yale and Harvard, who used to be Bible schools, will embrace the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the power of God. Tonight, say it, God, I touch your spirit. Hallelujah. That I give you eyes to see in the Holy Ghost that if God be for you, nobody can be against you. I bind every stronghold over Louisville. I bind every demon spirit, every Jezebel spirit, every religious spirit that rules over this area. And I say the shaking to the heavens by the power of God. God said that this will be a, a fulfillment of what I did with Israel when they came out of Egypt. The Lord said, when I brought Israel out of Egypt, they were broke and they were sick. And in a 24 hour period, I healed every one of them. And I gave them the wealth of those who had made them slaves. But God said, this wasn't just about delivering them from slavery. This was about bringing them into their inheritance. And Sunday, the Lord spoke this to me. He said, everybody's saying, can we go back to normal? God said, tell them there is no normal. What I'm getting ready to do, says God, is not normal. I'm going to so shake things. I'm going to turn things so upside down. That men will stand and wag their heads and say, only God could have done this. And look, for two years, says the Lord, <clears throat> the enemy has tried to wound the church until she was just a shell of who she was. God said, I allowed it to happen for one thing, he said, to reveal the hearts of men who call themselves believers. For those who embrace the spirit of fear, hear me, says God, fear will rule you till you die. For the Lord said, the days of repentance for the lukewarm are over. God said, I have beckoned, I have called, I have pleaded, and you would have none of my reproof. So the Lord says, I will laugh at the calamity of the lukewarm. And that's why judgment says God is going to begin in the house of the Lord. At the same time, says God, there is going to be such a release of souls into the kingdom of God that you will not sorrow over those that leave. You will not remember them, says Lord, because of the sound of the new birth that is crying out in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. God says for years it's been a a move where man and God work together. The Lord says, what you're getting ready to see, I don't need man to do it. God said, this is me this time. Because I am reaping the earth for the harvest that I'm getting ready to bring home in the rapture. When the Lord said, I brought Israel out. And I put them in an impossible place till it looked like they were going to perish. And then God said, I caused them to walk through the Red Sea. He said, I did it because I was baiting the Egyptians to follow them. What they did not know was what was deliverance to the Israelites was going to be destruction to the Egyptians. 
And God said, I had to destroy the Egyptians so they would no longer harass my children because I needed my people to be focused on their future and not their past. And God said, I'm getting ready. And this year, this is something I really want to emphatically impress on you. The Lord said, the days are coming to an end where we're going to be keep saying God's going to, God's going to, God's going to. And he said, you're going to see it. And you're going to say, God did it. God did it. God did it. The Lord says, I have baited the enemy into believing that the church is not a threat. Because I am positioning the enemy to a place that in a moment's time, I'm going to begin to remove them from the earth. And God says for years, the battle has been a spirit battle. But life has been normal in the normal realm, in the, in the secular realm, in the natural realm. God said when 23 hit. I took the battle out of the spirit realm and I've put it in the natural realm. And you're going to see with these eyes, hey, Sunday, hallelujah. And you're going to hear with these ears what I have been warning about for years. And while I am removing your enemies, says God, that you will see no more. Hallelujah. I am preparing you to invade the enemy's camp and to possess. Hallelujah. What they thought was theirs is now going to be yours. Hallelujah. This year, this calendar year, says the Lord, will be a year of making men hearts revealed. Because of the unwillingness to publicly declare for many major churches, because they skirted around abortion, because they did not want to offend, they did not want to lose their people, they did not want their offerings to get small. Hear me say it, God, today I am cleansing the fence. You're going to get on one side or you're going to get on the other. And the Lord says for most people who were on the fence, they're going to get off on the wrong side because they should have never been on the fence in the first place. Even as Joshua declared, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. God said, I'm raising up some Davidic men and women that are not afraid of the God. Not are not afraid to lay down their life for the kingdom of the Lord. But they would declare, if God be for me, nobody can be against me. I declare today, there is no weapon formed against you that can prosper. And every word that rises up against you in judgment, you shall condemn. In the name of the Lord, I declare divine healing in this building right now. In the name of Jesus, we bind every spirit. I loose instant healing up Holy Ghost healing up I loose the baptism of the Holy Ghost on you we loose an utterance a sound a sound begin to come up out of your spirit may God break the spirit of heaviness off of you may God lift you up in the Holy Ghost and make you run with feet like a hind's feet God said, prepare yourself because you're going to see famous leaders who have written Christian books and pastored large churches. And I'm going to make them choose. And the day they do that, says the Lord, they seal their faith. God said, I destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. I heard the Lord say this, 
I am moving away from denominations. And God said the reason I'm moving away from them is because there's such a spirit of control in their leaders that I cannot move. And what they had in the past, God says they no longer have the dove. They just have the dove's dung that they're eating because the dove has flown away. And God said the Holy Spirit is a fresh move of the Lord. And so one of the things that we're going to see in this harvest is there is a great deliverance coming to the gay community. Praise God. And watch it. Hallelujah. 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 I hear the Lord say that the deliverance, the level of deliverance that I am beginning to loosen the church is not a transition deliverance. It's not a gradual deliverance. They're not going to need months of counseling in order to get free. God said they're going to come in bound, whether it's by alcohol or meth or whatever. And the Lord says, in my presence is going to be such a level of healing and deliverance. They're going to come in bound and they're going to walk out set free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 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 This is the inheritance of the saints. For those who are radical for God. Lord said, I have waited until I knew who was on my side. And God said, I have pared it down just as I did in Gideon's time. Because it was not the numbers I needed, but it was the faith. And as God begins to begins this cleansing of the house. As he begins to remove and empty it out. The harvest is going to begin to come quick. By the spirit of the Lord. The Lord says. What's getting ready to happen. God says the greatest move of the Lord. Is not going to be in the buildings. In the book of Acts. The Lord said. The disciples stayed in Jerusalem. But the church went out. And God said, I told them to go into the highways, the byways, and the hedges. And God said, prepare yourselves because I am releasing such a heavy spirit of the Lord on people that are sold out. That you're going to be sitting in a restaurant and it's going to be full. And all of a sudden, the spirit of God is going to settle down in restaurants. Hallelujah. And God said, men and women that I have made God gates are going to get an unction. Hallelujah. And they're going to stand up and the spirit of the Lord is going to begin to come out of them. And God said, whole restaurants are going to have revival in the midst of it. They're going to come out of the kitchen. The servers are going to get saved. There's going to be release of my presence. I also know this by the spirit. I know a few years ago, the Lord spoke prophetically about sports that he was going to shut them down because they took his day. God said, I've allowed a temporary reprieve. The Lord said, one of the strongholds I'm going to break off of this nation is the spirit of entertainment, particularly sports. God said, get ready because within the next two years, sports are going to die. And it's not because there's not going to be athletes, but God said, I'm going to change the appetite of what this nation is looking for. Hallelujah. God said they've not come to the house because there's been no food in the house that they wanted to eat. 
But the Lord said, what I am putting on the table of my people is going to be so amazing. Hallelujah. That when they come in, they're going to forget about golf. They're going to forget about college football. They're going to forget about professional football. They're going to forget about baseball and the World Series. Pastors are not going to have to beg their people to come to church anymore. But they're going to have to try to figure out where are we going to put them because of the draw of the Spirit of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. God said, I lift your spirits tonight in the power of the Lord. The Lord said, I'm taking off the church the spirit of heaviness and I'm putting on you the garment of praise that out of your belly shall begin to flow rivers of living water. Even in the month of January, says the Lord, you're going to begin to see the glory of God. God said, I'm going to take secular news and I'm going to make them one of the biggest voices for the kingdom of God they're going to come and beg to film services they're going to want to come with their cameras and say can we film your services because of the release of the majesty and of the power of the Lord may God get inside of your spirit tonight may God begin to speak to you in dreams and visions may the Lord set you on fire may God revive you may there be a resurrection anointing uh, begin to get a hold of you uh, may you never say that's not my nature that's not my personality uh, but I'm gonna give you feet like David uh, and you're gonna dance before the Lord uh, and shout and praise God uh, I set you free uh, for such a time as this uh, I delivered you for this hour shout it to the Lord uh, and watch what I do Hallelujah. Some of you might have, have heard me recount this, but in 37 years ago when I saw that old man that had the anointing of Elijah on him begin to decry the line of Judah shall roar again today and when he did that I saw the boldness and the intimidation that was on evil spirits go up into the heavens and I saw the spirit of fear and sorrow and tears that was on God's people. They wept because they couldn't do anything. Go up and it switched. And it came back down. And the fear and the sorrow fell on demons. And the power Praise and the authority God. fell on God's people. Amen. And I watched those demons drop their weapons and run for yeah. safety while the people of God chased them. The Lord always waits until it looks so impossible that there's no way it could ever happen unless God does it. God can do anything he wants. I, I want to share this with you. <clears throat> when 
before I ever <clears throat> had a prophetic mantle on me. I had quit preaching, went through a horrible divorce. And there was adultery involved and my heart was broken and all those things. And I didn't quit serving the Lord, but I just didn't have any unction. I wound up homeless on the streets of Nashville. And I slept in my car. And one day <clears throat> I went to church and a man came to me and he said, God said to tell you that he's going to raise you up and you're going to be a voice heard around the world. And I looked and I thought, you're nuts. <laughs> and yet today I see that fulfilled. And it would be impossible if God had not done it. Sometimes God allows you to go to such a low place that he, see, it's in the suffering that you find fellowship. It's on the mountain that you find victory and power. What God wants from you is fellowship. So the days of Christians not having daily prayer life is over. I love the fact that you have prayer and fasting for 21 days. We do that at our church, and it's amazing how fast our church grew, how many people had never fasted, didn't know how to pray an hour. <clears throat> so me and my wife would lead prayer meeting. We're the only ones praying out loud. But I was trying to teach them. That prayer meeting is not you sitting on a seat reading your Bible. Read your Bible at home. Amen. Prayer meeting is where you pray. That's right. Hallelujah. Where you just begin to walk all over this building and up and down the rows. And you begin to call out in the name of the Lord. And you begin to bind strongholds. And you begin to release the spirit of God that's in you. And you begin to come into agreement with what the Holy Ghost is saying. And, and then you begin to release your prayer language. What is that? That's the Holy Ghost praying through you with grace groanings that cannot be uttered and when you and the Holy Ghost begin to come into agreement you give me about a hundred people in this building that get in the spirit of the Lord that know how to And we can change this city in about a month by the power of the Holy Spirit. May God so turn you upside down tonight. May God put some fire in your belly. Hallelujah. May God set you on fire that there be no lukewarmness. But finally you just stand up and say, Oh God, to you be the glory. For I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ. Christ in me, a world evangel prayer center. I declare this year be the greatest year that you have ever seen. That every prophetic word comes to pass. Every blessing of God falls on this house. Hallelujah. I heard the Lord.
won't tell me this because I'm, I've heard several people talk about that it's going to get worse and that things are going to get uh, increasingly difficult. This is what I heard the Lord say. He said, you tell my church that I am creating a window of peace in this nation. God said, I'm going to put a spirit of rest in this nation because he says harvest cannot be done in war. So God said, I'm going to go before you and I'm going to fight your battles and I'm going to deal with strongholds and spirits in the heavens because he says there has to be a time of peace for the harvest to come in. And even people that don't give their heart to the Lord, God is going to cause them to be sympathetic. You're going to see men and women who really never give their heart to Christ, but they're going to begin to release large sums of money to the kingdom of God because they have a sympathy for what we're doing by the spirit of the Lord. And God said, I am going to deal with the spirits that have brought such division in this nation. And the Lord said, one of the first spirits that I'm going to deal with is a spirit of racism. First of all, it is a demon. Anything that divides the body of Christ is a demon. And God is going to bring judgment on white and black leaders especially in the house of the Lord that have perforated this evil spirit in the house of God. Because I can promise you when we get to heaven, there will be no race divisions. Hallelujah. There will be no race division by the spirit of the Lord. So in the name of the Lord, especially here in the South, I hate this foul spirit. And whether you're black or you're white, when you got saved, you're Christian first. And make God so baptized. There needs to be a baptism of love begin to hit the body of Christ. Whether you're oneness or trinity or you're black or you're white or you're from one culture or another. No wonder the church doesn't have any power and any authority because our greatest enemy is us in the house of the Lord. So I break it in the name of Jesus. I break this foul demon. May God remove from this house every racism, every demon spirit, every Jezebel spirit in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. If God be for you, nobody, nobody, nobody can be against you. Either on God's side or you're on the enemy's side. Hallelujah. You're going to have to be sold out 100%. There's something else I hear the Lord saying. The days of having church one day a week are over. I don't understand it. Every other business mind realize you can't make it one day a week. Walmart is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Adult bookstores are open seven days a week. And yet the church is open for about two hours once a week. And we can't figure out why we can't have a move of the Lord. Come on. And the Holy Spirit's sitting up there saying, I ain't coming down there because nobody wants me. <clears throat> I wonder what would happen if about 200 people just showed up one night with no agenda said, we're just going to wait on you, Holy Ghost, because we're hungry for you. I promise you. Yeah, bubble someday. That the Holy Spirit would look at Jesus and say, I can't stay up here. Hallelujah. 
I got to go. Why? Because they're being pulled on by the Spirit of the Lord. This generation, most of it has never seen the glory of God. 55% of Christians in America are pro-gay. Not secular. Christians. Can't be that way. Listen, I got bold in my old age. I, another year, I'll be 70 years old, so I don't need any new friends. <laughs> Hallelujah. I stand in defense of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm tired of listening to preachers when they get done. You go, what did they talk about? You say, I don't have a clue what they said. Come on. I promise you, when you leave here tonight, you will at least ask, wonder what he meant. God has saved his best for last. You could have been born in any century. God saved you for this time most of us will hear the trumpet sound for the rapture and this is what I heard the Lord speak to me about I'm going to bring in a supernatural season of rest while I bring in the harvest and he said the church And as long as the church is in the earth, the Antichrist will not be, re be revealed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because the church is the savior with Christ in it for the world. And we are the light of the world. And when the Lord says harvest is done, he will look at the angel and tell him to blow the last trumpet and the trumpet will sound. The church is going to lift up out of the earth, but we're not going home empty handed. One of the things that God is going to do is he's going to save our unsaved children. 